I am not a historian, but neither are you. So, how about we the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. And I'll be honest with you guys, the last few episodes of US 101 have been kind of dark, been, been kind of bleak. So for today's episode, how about we switch it up, make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more bright, and way more delicious. Fact. Donuts are the greatest food of all time. Go ahead and try to debate me on this, son. I promise you, you will lose. Think about it. Let's just go through the reasons why real quick. It's a small portable breakfast food that can be eaten at any time of the day. They come in literally any flavor that you want and can have pretty much any topping that you would like. They pair perfectly with coffee or are just fine solo. You can bring a box of donuts anywhere and they will be happily accepted by all the recipients. And outside of eggs, I think they're the only food that you can order a dozen of and no one will immediately go, you are a fat piece of shit. But more importantly, donuts, while originally a Dutch creation, didn't really become popular until they made it to the good old US of A. Mm, well, technically it wasn't the United States yet, and to be even more specific, the Dutch didn't call them donuts, uh, they were called oily cakes, because they were small cakes that were fried in pork fat, and when the Dutch brought them to our shores, they brought them to Manhattan, which wasn't being called Manhattan at the time, it was still being called New Amsterdam, and it, you know what, You know, I'm getting ahead of myself, how about you guys go ahead and grab yourself a chocolate with sprinkles, grab a coffee, and sit down while I regale you with a tasty American tale. So yes, while the Dutch did bring the first version of donuts to us, it wouldn't be until the mid-19th century that the Dutch oily cake would take on the familiar shape that we know and love today. The story goes that Elizabeth Gregory would whip up a batch of oily cakes for her son, Hanson Gregory, and his crew to eat on long ship voyages because her son was a, was a ship captain. And what she would do is she would pack the center of the cakes with nuts, like walnuts for example, where the dough wouldn't cook all the way through. So in a sense, Elizabeth Gregory created the very first donuts. But it would actually be her son, Hanson Gregory, who would take credit for putting the hole in the middle of the oily cakes. Now, while Gregory himself would claim in an interview that he put a hole in the center of the cake by using the top of a tin pepper box, there are other legends uh, that surround how Gregory managed to put the hole in the center of the cake. Some say that during a storm, while the captain was steering the ship with one hand while holding a tasty cake in the other hand, he had to grasp full control of the ship and its wheel. So he took the cake and he spiked it on one of the spokes of the wheel, thus creating the hole in the center of the cake. Others suggest that he put the hole in the center of the cake so that the uh, that the nuts that his mom would put in the center of it would no longer be needed. And others claim that he put the hole in the center of the oily cake uh, to make it easier to digest. But regardless, by 1847, the donut that we have all come to know and love was officially born. And speaking of donut, you might be wondering actually where that word came from. Turns out that one of the earliest mentions of the word donut came from a book that was written in 1809 by Washington Irving called A History of New York, From the Beginning of the World to the End of the Dutch Dynasty. In the book, Irving describes a table that's full of food inside of a Dutch home in New Amsterdam. Irving wrote, quote, Sometimes the table was graced with immense apple pies or saucers full of preserved peaches and pears, but it was always sure to boast an enormous dish of balls of sweetened dough fried in hog's fat and called donuts or oily cakes. Now, following the creation of the donut, some of the first people to truly appreciate this magnificent pastry were our soldiers that were fighting on the front lines in World War I. Because during the war, American soldiers were served donuts in the trenches by women volunteers who wanted to give them uh, a taste of home. And these ladies would, uh, would grow to form a name. They were called the Donut Girls. Donuts also gave comfort to the soldiers that fought in World War II and even the ones that fought in the Vietnam War. And also, they were handed out uh, by women volunteers. But at this point, they no longer had the name Donut Girls. They were now called Donut Dollies. But the Donut Game would be revolutionized in 1920 all thanks to a Russian refugee living in New York City named Adolf Levitt. So when Levitt was living in New York City, he had a bakery and he was making donuts for hungry patrons. And they loved his donuts so much that they begged him to make even more of the tasty treats and Levitt happily obliged. What did he do? He created a machine that could create 80 dozen donuts 
per hour. Additionally, what Levitt did in his shop is he set up the machine in front of a glass window so that people could not only see how the donuts were being made, but then they could walk around and then eat the brand new fresh donuts. And Levitt's machine was so successful that other bakeries around the country requested their own donut making machine and Levitt was happy to help him out. By the early 1930s, he would go on to sell his machines and ended up making around $25 million a year. $25 million a year in the 1930s, if you take that number and apply it to today's economy, $25 million a year, he'd be making around $394 million a year because of donuts. And as these donuts were being doled out by the dozens in the 1930s, they continued to become even more popular. In fact, at the World's Fair in Chicago in 1934, the donut was hailed as a food of the future. Now, before we move any further, let me just point out that uh, in the United States, Normally what you'll do is you'll pledge your allegiance uh, to one of two huge donut chains. You're either a Krispy Kreme fan or a Dunkin' Donuts fan. Me, I'm a Dunkin' Donuts guy because I've been eating Dunkin' Donuts my whole life. On top of that, the stores are pretty much everywhere you look. And when I was growing up, this guy right here, huge part of my childhood. So let's take a quick glance as to where these two donut giants got their start. We take you back to the 1930s where we'll meet a man by the name of Joe LeBeau who's just made his way to Paducah, Kentucky. LeBeau made his way to Kentucky with a donut recipe in mind as well as a name and that name was Krispy Kreme. Now he made his way to Kentucky and uh, at the time you have to remember that in the 1930s the Great Depression is still on so people are jobless, people are trying to find any way they can to make money. So what he does is he sells his donut recipe and the name Krispy cream to a store owner in Paducah named Ishmael Armstrong. Now Armstrong upon receiving the recipe hires his nephew Vernon Rudolph to start making these donuts and start selling them door to door. But by 1937 Vernon and a couple of his friends make their way to Winston-Salem, North Carolina and with the money that they have they buy the raw ingredients to make the donuts, they, uh, they, they whip up a batch and they start selling them uh, to stores in the area and people go crazy for Krispy Kreme. Residents of the town and then eventually the state start flocking to Vernon's place so they can start eating these delicious donuts. So Vernon Rudolph, what he does is he takes uh, Adolph Levitt's model, he starts making the donuts behind a glass wall so people can see uh, how the donuts are being made. And by doing that, patrons were able to see when a fresh batch of donuts were ready to be served. And to this day, if you pass by Krispy Kreme stores, uh, you'll notice that they have neon signs that will let you know when hot fresh donuts are ready to be served to you. Now by the 1940s and the early 1950s, Krispy Kreme starts building a reputation as an outstanding donut seller, but we now make our way up to Quincy, Massachusetts in the year 1948. And we meet a man by the name of William Rosenberg. Now Rosenberg in 1948 opens up a coffee and donut shop called Open Kettle. But two years later, with the help of uh, some people that want to help him uh, change his brand up, he, uh, he changes the name from Open Kettle to Dunkin' Donuts. And the name has stuck ever since. And since then, Dunkin' Donuts and Krispy Kreme have been locked in a battle for donut superiority. And then of course, we cannot forget about the smaller donut shops, the uh, the local donut shops that are only available in your city, places like Voodoo Donuts in Portland, Oregon, uh, Fire Cakes here in Chicago, Illinois, you've got Dough in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, and let's not forget one of the best American holidays of all time. Of course, I'm talking about National Donut Day, which maybe some of you think, oh, it's a new uh, holiday that the, the donut shops, Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts invented so we can get free donuts on a day. Not true, young one. It actually was started in 1938 by the Salvation Army. And the Salvation Army started National Donut Day to honor the memories of those donut girls that were giving donuts to American soldiers in World War I on the front line. And to this day, the Salvation Army uses National Donut Day as a, as a fundraiser. And there you have it my fellow donut lovers, just a little bit of information about the donut's place in American history and how important it is to the United States of America. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for checking out the episode. I really do appreciate it. And thanks to all of you that have been subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, sharing them, leaving comments. Actually, let me know in the comment section down below. You a Dunkin' Donuts fan? Krispy Kreme fan? Do you have your own favorite donut shop that's local to your area? Let me know what donuts you pledge your allegiance to. As always, guys, you can follow US 101 on all the social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, all those links down below in the description box. I will see you guys next Tuesday for an all new episode of US 101. Until then, I am all done, or in this case, I should say, I am all donut. Oh, mm. it's so good. Mm.